Hey everyone, it's Susie from Freezer Fit. Welcome back to our channel. We are going to show you some of our absolute favorite freezer meal recipes. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get notified for all of our new videos. Let's jump right in. Hey everyone, it's Susie with Freezer Fit. Today we're going to be preparing four of my favorite Asian style freezer meal recipes. My husband and I love Asian food and I love to have these meals in my freezer for nights when I feel like ordering takeout, Chinese, Thai or Japanese food. They're really healthy, they're a great option if you're craving that and I can't wait to show you these meals. So let's get started. We're going to start with Thai peanut chicken. This is one of my favorite ones, I am obsessed with peanut butter. Unfortunately, I cannot consume it as much as I want to because it does break my face up out a little bit, uh, but I still love it. It's uh, great to have it in moderation and the amount of peanut butter in this recipe is great if you have allergies too. Uh, but yeah, all of these meals are going to be for a serving size of three to four people. So if you're cooking for more people, just add a little bit more of meat or a little bit more of each ingredient. And without further ado, Let's get started. We're going to be adding all the meat at the end of the class to avoid cross contamination and to make it a little faster, a little more fun. Let's add one can of unsweetened coconut milk. This one is 13.5 ounces. A, a third of a cup of creamy peanut butter. Mm. I love the smell. It's so good. Let's get all the goodies in there. Can you believe my first time trying peanut butter and jelly was when I moved here to the US and I was obsessed. I like literally ate it every day. My husband was a little worried. Um, one lime for juice. But I love it, it just smells so good. This one is one of my favorite recipes for sure. It's just the smells, the creaminess, the combination of the coconut meal, the peanut butter and the lime, is so, so good. So let's add our lime juice. Next, we have two tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm going to be using coconut aminos because I want to make this meal soy free and less sodium. But you can use soy sauce, tamari, liquid aminos, anything you have in your house. And that's it, I'm gonna put it here. Two tablespoons of honey, yum starting to get sweet but it has the citrusy from the lime the creaminess from the coconut and the peanut butter so let's do two tablespoons here and remember you can always add more or less of whatever ingredient you feel like you want um, if you want more honey if you like it a little more sweet, you can add more. It's so easy to customize these meals. So no worries at all. You won't mess it up. I promise you it's almost impossible to mess any of these meals. So you go ahead, you do you, I do me. Okay. One tablespoon of sesame oil. Going to be using the same one. Two, tes two teaspoons of garlic powder. Two teaspoons of yellow, yellow curry powder. I'm going to use half a teaspoon uh, because the container is too small. So I'm going to use four, no, wait. Yes, two teaspoons, so four, half a teaspoon. done. One teaspoon ground ginger, one teaspoon ground cumin, and one teaspoon ground masala. Let's 
cumin. There we go. So perfect. And the last ingredient is half a teaspoon of crushed red peppers. If you want to make it a little spicier, just add more or even add sriracha if you want to. I will stick to this just in case that one changed the flavor a little bit. We want to keep it really limey, peanut butter, coconut. It's just, it's good just as it is. And that's it. Like I said, we're going to be adding all of the meat at the end. But to cook this, you can cook this in the crock pot or in the instant pot. If you're cooking it in the crock pot, uh, just start the freezer meal completely, cook on high for four hours or on low for six hours or until the chicken is cooked through. Then you shred the chicken or slice it and mix it with the sauce. For the instant pot, you can cook this from frozen, saute for five minutes, uh, flip the meal over, pressure cook on high for 20 minutes, then allow 10 minutes for natural release. And again, you shred the chicken or slice it and mix it with the sauce, make it super creamy and juicy. And I love serving this over rice. Uh, I like to add a little bit of cucumber. It just, it does it for me. Next we have Famous chicken teriyaki. Who doesn't like chicken teriyaki? It's just so good. I was between adding to this combo chicken teriyaki or orange chicken, but my love for chicken teriyaki is big. So here we are. We're on a cut a cup of light brown sugar. If you wanna make any of these meals a little more low carb, you know, no sugar, keto, you can totally do just add monk fruit instead and 101 radio so if you if we're adding a cut a cup then we'll you add a, and then you'll add a cut a cup of monk fruit so we have three tablespoon four tablespoon cut a cup perfect cut a cup of ketchup my ketchup is here no added sugar um, I honestly love it. I know that a lot of people doesn't like it. My husband was one of those and he is obsessed with it. And every time we go to like a restaurant and he tries like the normal one, the one that is huge, uh, doesn't say no added sugar and it has a ton of sugar added, then he doesn't like it. He thinks it's too sweet. And I love that because your palatar just gets used to when you don't eat as much um, sweet food as you used to then everything you start tasting so different so like even things like no added sugar ketchup can do it for you um but yeah i love that i use no added sugar in almost all of my ingredients and it's just really healthy next we're going to add a cut cup of soy sauce again i'm going to be using coconut aminos you can use tamari, soy sauce. Let's do it. I got all of my ingredients at Aldi. Super affordable. I did, didn't did find the coconut aminos in there. I found the uh, tantum and I like it because it's soy free, less sodium. It's just a great alternative. Two tablespoons of teriyaki sauce. And for our seasonings, we have one teaspoon ground ginger, one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon onion powder, and one teaspoon black pepper. Let's see if I remember that. So, one teaspoon ground ginger. Mm -hmm. Here it is. One teaspoon garlic powder. I remember one teaspoon of black pepper. and one teaspoon of onion powder. And that's it, let me make sure that's all. Ground ginger, garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper. Done. To cook this, you can cook this in the crock pot, in the instant pot. In the crock pot, completely thaw the freezer meal. Cook on low for four to six hours or on high for three to four hours. 
and when it's done cooking you shred or slice the chicken mix it with the sauce and if you do want to thick the sauce a little bit you can combine water with a little bit of cornstarch and then use uh, cook until it's uh, bubbly and very thick depending on how thick you like it and then in the instant pot cook this from frozen saute for five minutes then flip the meal um, pressure cook on 20 minutes natural release for 10 minutes and then you are done again you can slice or shred the chicken put it aside add the water and the cornstarch slurry and then just saute until it's very thick and bubbly and then just add the chicken back into the instant pot mix it all and then serve i love serving this super traditional broccoli uh, white rice or brown rice and it's super super yummy next we have sweet and sour chicken one of my husband's favorite right here he loves it he says it tastes exactly or even better than takeout and for him to say that i'm telling you it's big really big cut a cup of italian dressing you can also use olive oil if you don't have italian dressing Wait, that's a lot of water. There we go. Done. Got a cup of ketchup. Whoa, <laughs> I hate when that happens. It's like he sneezes on me. There we go. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm going to be using coconut aminos. Two tablespoons of light brown sugar or honey. Here is my thing. I love both. I think I'm gonna stay with light brown sugar. I did a, the right choice. I know so. I believe so. Oh, two tablespoons. Let's use. I'm running out of tablespoons here. Okay. Perfect. Next we have one tablespoon sesame oil. One tablespoon of, well, two teaspoons of garlic powder. There we go. Half a teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon pepper, and that's it. Half a teaspoon salt. My huge Himalayan pink salt and pepper. You know what? I am going to go ahead and add just one tablespoon of honey, just because I think it will give it a really good flavor, because I love honey, and I mean, this is sweet and sour, so gotta add the sweetness and that's it for this recipe you are going to cook it in the oven so completely thaw the freezer meal um, you're going to line a baking dish you're going to spread all the contents from the freezer bag into the baking dish um, you're going to try to spoon the marinade from the freezer bag just get all the goodies because you're going to need them and bake on cover in the center of the rack for 45 to 50 minutes or until the chicken is cooked through. And just try to check occasionally just to make sure if you need to flip it or anything, but that's it. I feel like you could also cook this in the instant pot for frozen. Um, just saute for five minutes, 
pressure cook of 20 to 25 minutes depending on the servings and then natural release for 10 minutes and um, yeah and that's it last but certainly not least sweet and spicy beef lettuce wraps one of my personal favorites I love this recipe because it's also really easy to change a little bit like if you want to do this with ground turkey with ground chicken not just ground beef so it's like it's uh, really easy to customize that's what I'm trying to say let's go into let's going to add two tablespoons of honey It's also really healthy, serve on lettuce scraps. But you can add, you know, rice, sriracha on top, anything you like. Cut a cup of coconut aminos. Where are you? Here. One tablespoon of sriracha, more or less to taste so if you like everything more spicy then just add more but I'm just going to add I'm going to add just one for this one I've been making a lot of spicy foods and I deserve a little break half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes Half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and we are done with this recipe. How easy was that? Now you have a whole restaurant, Asian restaurant, with your favorite takeout meals. But now I'm going to show you how to add all of the meats in all of these baggies. So let's start with the first one. Type in a chicken, we're going to add just a little bit over a pound of boneless, skinless chicken breast. You can use fresh or frozen. I'm going to add frozen chicken breast. I got this package at Costco and I cut all of the chickens in individual packagings. This is really easy to add to the meals like right now. And if you don't have to cut the chicken into like small bite size, a small bites or strips, then you can easily just add the whole chicken breast frozen. It doesn't matter. It will cook perfectly. It will absorb all of the sauces and the spices. So you're good. And then we're going to add another, a little bit over a pound for the chicken teriyaki. This way you can take advantage of all of the bulk deals at Costco, Sam's, and the chicken don't go to waste or doesn't get bad in the fridge because you forgot to make the chicken. Okay, the next one is going to be sweet and sour chicken. For this one, I did want to cut it into one inch pieces, a uh, little bite-sized chicken. The reason for that is because I prefer it that way with this recipe, but if you don't want to do that, then you can easily just put the whole breast if you have it frozen in the freezer. Um, yeah, but especially because this one is cooked in the oven, it's better to add small pieces of chicken. This is a little over a pound, but if you're cooking it in the instant pot or in the crock pot, then it's definitely good to add the whole chicken breast and then just shred it or slice it when it's done cooking. For our last recipe, we're going to add a little over a pound of extra lean ground beef, but like I was saying, you can add 
ground turkey, ground chicken, ground pork if you want to. Just anything really goes well with this recipe. And that's it. I can't wait for you and your family to try all of these meals. You're really going to feel like you're eating out of a restaurant because I am telling you, restaurant quality meals right here. They're yummy. I mean, husband approved. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this class. I hope you enjoyed these meals. Right now, I'm just going to mix it up a little bit in the freezer bag, as you can see, so that the chicken or the beef absorb all of the juices and the flavors and the seasonings from the bag. But other than that, I'm just gonna pop that in my freezer, seal them so they're really good conserve for up to three months. And I'm going to repeat that process with all of the baggies, put it in the freezer, ready to cook them when I want to. And that's it for the class. I don't take more of your time and I hope you enjoy. Ciao. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps us grow our channel and continue to put out more awesome freezer cooking content like this. Also, we really want to hear what you guys like, so please be sure to leave a comment below with your favorite freezer meal recipe from this video and if you have any suggestions for which type of recipes you would like to see next. For more freezer meal recipes, free cooking classes and free cookbooks, be sure to check our site freezerfit.com. Happy cooking, ciao!